So let us give some more examples. These have been taken from Alan Hatch's book on vector bundles. You can find the link in the description of the video. So first is the tangent bundle of the unit sphere. So you take point x from the sphere and this vector v is tangent at this point. So the dot product is 0. So x is perpendicular to v. v is the tangent vector to the sphere at point x. Now we have to talk about local trivialization conditions. So for local trivialization you first pick a point x and then you pick a neighborhood u of x. Uh, before that just notice that the projection map is just natural so you have to project down to the sphere. So when you project it down you just take x. So projection will just take this x part which is the part of the sphere. So the projection map is just from E to the sphere. So let me write this down. You have from E to this SN is the projection map. So the open set we have to find is in the sphere. So let us draw the sphere and pick a point on it. So you have a sphere, you pick a point on it, say X, and this is the origin. So you connect the point and the origin, so you get a position vector for the point. So what you do is you draw a plane through the origin which is perpendicular to this position vector. So let us draw this plane. So this is a plane and this plane will intersect the sphere at certain points. So let us draw those uh, points where this sphere will intersect the plane in green. So now you have this green uh, boundary of u of x. So you have got a hemisphere essentially. So u of x is nothing but a hemisphere and now you can see the boundary of it. So p inverse of u of x, uh, so if you find the p inverse of u of x, you will get back into the space E. So you take two points here, y and v. So y lies on the sphere and v is tangent vectors there. So this is the local trivialization condition. So this p inverse of u of x goes to u of x times p inverse of x. So this is our local trivialization condition. What we want to find out is that if you pick another point y, we should have some kind of a isomorphism. So what you do is, associated with x, this x you have this plane. This plane you call p inverse of x. So associated to every point x, you have this plane p inverse of x. What local trivialization, what this entire thing is saying is that, so what you do is you take a point y, which lies in the neighborhood of x. So at this point y, say this is the point y you have taken, you will have some tangent vectors, these vectors v. So you have these tangent vectors v. So these tangent vectors you can project orthogonally onto this plane. And you say that this is a local trivialization because there is some kind of a correspondence. So you can read about this in Hatcher, but an easier way to see this is that if you pick some point y, you obviously will also can uh, do the same procedure as you had for p inverse of x. You can construct another plane which is, will be p inverse of y. And then you can see that you know this p inverse of y is nothing but rotation of p inverse of x. It's the same plane, you know, just rotated through the origin. So obviously these two are the same. These are just planes together. Uh, but rather than saying these are the same, in mathematics you have to prove it. So that's why you use this orthogonal projection. So this pi of x is the projection to our plane p inverse of x. And uh, this is a local trivialization since we have isomorphism of two planes. So what is local trivialization trying to achieve? It basically is saying that you could move from one point to another point uh, without destroying the local structure. So you're preserving this R and when you move from x to y. Second example is of a normal bundle. So again you have x comma v, x comes from the sphere, v comes from r and plus 1. So v is equal to t times x. So again local trivializations come from projecting fibers onto each other. So let us draw this. So you have a sphere, you have this point x. So the normal bundle is, this, this is your position vector, Mo normal bundle is just multiple of this. So you have t of x. And again you have another, so this is your uh, r, because this x is part of rn plus 1, so t of x is also rn plus 1. So again you have another point y. 
So you have this point y in the neighborhood of x. So first you construct the neighborhood precisely in the same way as you did in the previous example. You draw a plane, that plane intersects a circle, you have a neighborhood. Then in the neighborhood you pick another point y, then you have to say that you know how this y is linked to this. So you have to say that p inverse of x and p inverse of y are linked. So, so again the projection map is just projecting to the first coordinate x this is the projection map so you have e to sn projection map same as here so inverse image is also going to be same as here and therefore you will also have the same thing you will just uh, for y you will have this vector here t of y and uh, how do you prove that these two are uh, these are isomorphic you just uh, do orthogonal projection so again orthogonal projection so there is nothing much in it you know you're just taking real numbers here real numbers here multiplying with it nothing is happening another one is RPN this is uh, identifying the antipodal points so again this is a natural line bundle uh, so what you're doing is you're taking these points x0 x1 all the way to xn these are the points this is part of rn plus 1 and you make it into rp and you write it like this yeah by identifying the antipodal point so this is the transformation you do and uh, again here the local trivializations come from orthogonal projections so the standard idea which Hatcher follows is and which I'm saying is that first of all everywhere here uh, here again the projection map here is on RPN so if you have constructed something from sphere then you pick up the point in the sphere you have to form its neighborhood first the neighborhood you form is via this uh, uh, plane this plane which goes to the center and is perpendicular so that will also give you a neighborhood uh, then you can pick up a point and then you can uh, show that you know there is some kind of an isomorphism now we talk about isomorphism between two vector bundles so right now we were just talking about local trivialization conditions that how you could move from one fiber to another fiber uh, without uh, disturbing the structure at all now we want to talk about isomorphism between vector bundles so there are two vector bundles say e1 and e2 uh, both are projecting on the same base so this is the data of the vector bundle e1 p1 b so this is one vector bundle and then e2 p2 b this is the second vector bundle so the isomorphism means that there is a homeomorphism h between e1 and e2 uh, such that you take p1 inverse of b and you take p2 inverse of p there is a linear isomorphism right here so you need to check this linear isomorphism so let us do an example so this normal bundle which we just considered right here this is isomorphic to this simple product sn times r so this is via the map x comma t of x to x comma t so basically we have to show that this is a linear isomorphism so this is a linear map so let us see this so uh, I mean let us take a small example so say you just take s1 then you just have two coordinates uh, so you will have so this will become x0 x1 this is x done so this part is done then tx would be tx0 and tx1 obviously now you have to multiply this with some matrix and uh, what you want to get is this you want to get x0 x1 and then you just want to just get t but this is easy to get because what you can easily get is t of x0 square plus x1 square and this is one you know that because uh, this will lie on the sphere so that would be done so that is only thing we have to do and that can be easily achieved by writing down a matrix so let us just write down the matrix so x0 you will have then you have the second part then for tx0 then you just have to multiply by 
x0 and uh, x1 so you have 0 0 multiply by x0 and x1 